one of the issues at the heart of the Windrush scandal is what information is presented to ministers and what is dealt with by officials. Uh, Lord Kerslake was head of the Home Civil Service between 2012 and 2015, and I'm delighted to say joins me now. Uh, Lord Kerslake, thank you for being with us. Um, in your mind, is it conceivable that either this Home Secretary or, or the last Home Secretary were unaware of those targets uh, uh, around illegal immigrants? Let's put it this way. I find it very surprising. Uh, now, there could be one memo, the one that she says she hasn't seen, that went into her office but didn't get into her box. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of emails and memos that go into the private office. What I find uh, very surprising is that there wasn't some briefing to the minister when she went before the select committee or, indeed, other committees. So I think the question she's going to be asked tomorrow is not, were you aware of this particular memo, but were you briefed at any point on the issue of, my, of deportations and targets? Yeah, I mean, in that memo, it says, you know, it adds a supplementary point about progress has been made on a path towards the 10% increase in performance on enforced returns, which we promised the Home Secretary earlier this year. Now, when you, read, when you hear something like that, do you take it to mean that an official briefed the Home Secretary directly? Well, if you say you promised it to the Home Secretary, then it follows that some kind of information must have gone either to the Home Secretary or one of her special advisers. Uh, and, as I say, even if it wasn't done in that way, you would never put a minister in front of a select committee without properly briefing him on the issues. Where, then, does, does, does responsibility lie? I mean, we, we do seem to be through the looking glass in so, many, in so much of politics these days. Ministers used to resign for quite a lot less, by my reckoning. But we do see an awful lot of the buck being passed to, to those officials. I mean, do you think unfairly? I think so, actually. I am concerned about this. There's been much less of the noises off uh, that there were when I was uh, head of the civil service. A really quite corrosive period, it has to be said. But I think when the chips are down, ministers have to take responsibility. It is their department, after all. Privately, they may well say to a civil servant, look, I'm not happy, this hasn't been handled well. But the whole deal, if you like, is that the minister is responsible, they take credit for the things that go well, and they take responsibility for the things that don't go well. I mean, I just want to read you a tweet from uh, the MP Julian Smith. He says, the UK civil service is helping to deliver Brexit. The quality of support and advice is world class. Attacking individual civil servants is deeply unfair. That's now been retweeted by Theresa May's chief of staff, Gavin Barwell, who, if we uh, believe accounts in the papers today, had something of a set to with David Davis. I mean, have you ever known politicians and the civil service to be so at odds? Oh, yes, there have been at odds in the past. And as I say, when I was head of the civil service, we had a very difficult time because what we were getting were what I called noises off, unofficial briefings about the civil service and, and, and their ability. And I think there's been less of that. But um, Julian is right there. You, you cannot be in a situation where civil servants uh, are put, uh, in, put to the sword, and they're not, and this is the key point, in a position to respond. They can't go to the mail or the, or the telegraph or whatever and say, I they actually They can disagree. leak memos, which is not... I'm not well, suggesting that's happened uh, in this uh, occasion, but they yes, can leak memos. I mean, they can. But again, on, on, on Brexit, the civil service yeah, yeah. does appear to be coming in for a huge amount of flack. I mean, do you think that the, uh, the civil services remain? Look, up until a few years ago, we have to remember that was substantive government policy. So uh, all civil servants back the then government policy of trying to stay in the European Union. We have seen uh, a remarkable shift in recent years. And civil servants have had to come to terms with that. But, and this is the point, they pride themselves on being professionals in doing the job of supporting the government of the day. So they will be wanting to deliver a good Brexit, because that is the government's policy. It's still at the same time, you know, when the House of Lords defeated the government and the customs union the week before last, every living former cabinet secretary voted against the government. Armstrong, Butler, Wilson, Turnbull, O'Donnell, Lord Kerr, who proposed the, the amendment, you know, who was joined in voting against the government by his two successors at the Foreign Office. It does seem like the former, those who have moved on from the civil service are doing their very best to stymie the process of Brexit. Well, I don't think so, because uh, the votes against the Brexit bill are not, in a sense, saying Brexit cannot happen. They're saying if it happens, it has to be done in a way that doesn't damage the interests of this country. And as peers, as lords, they're entitled to challenge government and ask them to think again on legislation. And I generally think that is what is happening here. Uh, I think the idea that there's some Trojan horse inside the civil service trying to undermine Brexit is a very bad place for any politician to try and get into at the moment.
Don Kersley, many thanks for being with us. Thank you.